Okay, so this is uh, try number two of getting these apart. Um, I can show some pictures of me attempting to take this apart earlier. The first one, there's three bulbs that came out of a, a bathroom um, application. And these are Osram bulbs. Um, so the first attempt getting this apart was not very successful. Uh, I did manage to get to the LED board, the driver, um, but I just went through the whole wrong way of doing it. So the best way to get into these, if you do have an Osram type LED bulb, is to cut with an exacto knife, or sorry, a um, hacksaw, uh, all the way around, just below the plastic lip here, and then again, just above the uh, receptacle part, or the uh, the return part of the um, bulb itself that goes in the A socket. So just cut just above that and then you can get that out and you can get that off. And once you have that off then you have the LED board and it's just a matter of taking two screws out and desoldering uh, two connections. I'm going to do right now for this one. I think that's that's loose now. I'll just give it a give it a twist here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, the driver board just goes through. Um, you can actually see inside that the there's a big metal can in here essentially, um, and this guy just has a little bit of. Um, thermal paste through the center. But the key thing to look at is that you don't have any thermal paste on the outside where the loads are. So the LED provides the heat loads. So to get any heat out of this you have to, well you really need to have thermal paste all the way around to make contact to the actual um, other heat sink which is sort of the, the casing as well. And if you don't, then all the heat has to go laterally across this aluminum, and it's not a very large cross-sectional area, so it'll have a higher thermal resistance getting to the center to get out. And then, on top of that, once it gets into this this material here, it's got to go out towards the outer edges to get any further heat sinking. So not a good not a good design from this point of view. Um, the good thing that they've done is, which is better than what Kriha did, was they don't uh, bend the IMS material at all, so there's no microfractures which moisture can get into. So that's that's actually quite good. All right, so we'll set that aside for a moment. <clears throat> now for the driver, this guy here, there's a uh, two small wires are in there, and one is on a f it also has a fuse I believe in it that gets connected to the hot side of the the bulb and then there's a small wire that gets connected to the uh, return side the neutral side so we're just gonna see if we can get those out without uh, breaking stuff too much so I'm just snap the wire on the the socket and this guy here I think we can just so we can gently just pull it out and break the wire. Actually, you know, I can probably just take it out right at the fuse. So there's our driver board. 
So this one is not showing the same level of discoloration that uh, the first one I took apart had. But again, the same same sort of issues that uh, it's not designed for a vibration environment. So the cap isn't soldered or silicone down. You know, you have a through hole resistor. It's also in another cap. Um, you know, so if this bulb is vibra vibrating a lot, then you're going to see um, a potential breakage of the leads. In my case, we weren't really using this in a, an application like a you know garage door opener. <clears throat> so there is some discoloration, but not massively so. When we actually look at color of the inductor um, again it's hard to tell we are definitely still seeing heating on the the second one just not to the same extent now my thoughts are that one of the LEDs has opened up in the stack so there's 10 LEDs there in series each driving about, or each has about a 5 volt 4 voltage and so you need about 50 odd volts to, to run this um, to be working. So there's no problem with that, so that means that the, the actual uh, driver board for it had failed. And since I, we're seeing excessive heating, this is starting to push or, or be more of a conclusion that uh, their drivers are overheating and not getting sufficient cooling. Overall, not a horrible design, just, you know, they don't provide any vibration um, control, so you cut the potential to fill these in uh, high vibration environments like garage door openers. It seems to be the, the trend to, to cheap out on that. The heat sinking of the, the actual LED board is not done very well either so these will probably potentially have heating issues uh, if they're running in a hot environment since they don't have um, enough thermal contact with the uh, heat spreader that's part of the, uh, the main body of the, of the LED bulb. The boards themselves look like they're inadequately designed, uh, they're overheating um, every single one of them is showing discoloration um, of the components I checked on the one that I didn't see things had failed but uh, you know, that's not to say that the the uh, main IC didn't fail I, I don't know I'm not going to bother to go that far down and figure that out <coughs> but uh, would I recommend the Osram lamps uh, or LED bulbs? I'd say no. I don't think they do a good enough job with the thermal management in the bulb. And you'll end up having a short life out of them. You're much better off to find uh, one of the other manufacturers that are a little bit more reliable. The Cree itself had problems with the way that they attached the, uh, the LED um, array to their tower heat spreader. You can see a previous video in which I've done that um, tear down of one of the bulbs um, that had failed. But uh, yeah, so again, don't. I'm not recommending you buy these. They're they're uh, probably going to not last very long, and you'll be spending more money buying more, and uh, it's just not worth it. So if you found this, you know, valuable, you know, thanks. And if you didn't find it valuable, well, thanks for watching anyways.